All right. 10 minutes before we do this and I am doing a connect beforehand so we can at least get context, but I am so excited. Hi, Chess. Actually, it's morning more so. Hi, Khwas. Tawades. Gayeza. All praise and all thanks to our Creator for the gift of life, love, and mercy that we receive in this life and in all the lives to come. If you're not familiar with my face, if you are familiar with my face, it doesn't matter who I am. What does matter is you are here and we are here together to have an incredibly important conversation. Now, I know you hear this a lot. A lot of the time people are like, oh, you have, have you have to hear this and this is, a, but emancipation is not just something we all learned about when Bob Marley sang it. It's not just something we learned about when we were watching those American movies where these kids were moving away from their parents and emancipated from their parents. This is truly a direct action that you and I can take to set in motion the things that will set us free. Now, I'm going to start with the definition so that everybody... I have for emancipation. I will go to where I learned most of what I've done in terms of the laws and all these other things around the fictitious government and how we've actually become debt slaves in a paper, let's say, dictatorship. Emancipation, according to Black Laws Dictionary, this is the fourth edition, right? So if you don't know what Black's Laws Dictionary is, it's very critical that you start digging and stop looking at funny videos and start finding out what are these words that we speak that are made in, uh, in effort to set you free or to uh, help you with your case when you're in court. What do these words mean? The word emancipation, according to the lawyers, the attorneys, on Black Laws Dictionary, the fourth edition, emancipation, the act by which one who was unfree or under the power and control of another is rendered free or set at liberty and made his, I'm going to add or her, own master. And the case law is the town of Plainville versus the town of Milford, 119 Connecticut, 380 177A, 138, and 140. Now, the Black Laws Dictionary, if you're not familiar, there's a massive difference between legal and lawful. And we will dive into that a lot more. I know I haven't had a lot of uh, uh, time to share some of this stuff, but today's conversation is talking about emancipation. I'd love to know where you're watching from. Kai Gangangs for being part of today's conversation. Kai Gangangs, if you've shared... Uh, the, the link that you've received or if you shared the message to get as many of those who are willing to listen to what someone who has completed this process has got to say. Um, like I said, we all have this conversation with High Commissioner Charles Saunders today, which is an absolute honor. He's completed the emancipation process. Yes, he's a South African. Yes, he's a native, Aboriginal, Indigenous, Khoi, Kham, Sonka, whatever you want to call We are all of this of this country, Africa, this continent, whose borders were designed in the minds of men with the intention of having us be unfree. And this conversation is not to be taken as legal advice. The disclaimer, non-disclaimer that we are, are, are all familiar with, you as a sovereign, as a grown living man or woman, are making decisions every single day. Not because somebody's told you, not because somebody's forced you, but because of the information, the insight, and the guidance that you've received from choosing what sits right with you, what feels like, hey, this is right. We're not using this as a political standpoint, so please refrain from using the content section for, yeah, this is going to be for NCC voted. Yeah, this is going to be for DA voted. We are not concerned with politics, religion, as much as we know, there is no separation of church and state. As much as we know that there was no Bible or Torah or Quran when people came to Africa to colonize our minds, 
because it is in our minds where we are actually able to meet God. We are actually able to create because everything, everything, this thing, this mobile phone, the one in your hand, this, this gift of this vehicle that I am sitting in, in order to have like a soundproof here, these things were all first in the mind. They were a thought and that thought manifested through action. So what I'm asking you to do is to think, to ask questions. That's the purpose of this. Keep your comments respectful. We're not looking to bash each other. We are all in the same boat. If you didn't know, as long as you're a citizen of this country, you, my friend, my brother, my sister, you are a debt slave. And I want to read something for you. And if you want to go and find out a bit more, you want to do a bit more deep digging before we get to the uh, interview with um, High Commissioner Charles Saunders, there's a website you can go to, giftoftruth.wordpress.com. Now, there are very many other sources. There are, you can even go to the um, internetarchive.org, all these other places where you can truly dig for yourself. Spend that one hour instead of scrolling and laughing, and which is fine because you are allowed to choose what you want to spend your time on. But if you could intake information that can not only change your life, but impact the lives of your children, your neighbors, your community, so that you are not handing a spear, a shield, or another empty hope of, we will be free one day. We will be able to live as men and women in our own right without being oppressed. Visit thegiftoftruth.wordpress.com and you will find out a whole lot of what we will be talking about and what I have discovered and some of the things that I've shared on my platform before and even some of the conversations I'm sure you've had with your friends or with your at the braai or when you're at these events talking about why are we still singing freedom songs? Why are we still talking about, okay, no, this election or maybe this pastor or maybe this community leader or maybe this movement? Why are we jumping, hopping, skipping and hopping around waiting for someone to save us when the power is vested in you, where the ability to set yourself free is in you? We cannot comply our way into liberation. We cannot comply our way into freedom. And there is no way that any of us are just going to talk our way into having a free life where our children and the generations that come after us are given an empty book and an empty canvas to go and experience life and come back and tell us their stories when we are in our sunset years instead of saying, hey, mommy, I've joined the struggle. Hey, daddy, it's my 21st today. Maybe now when I vote, now we will be liberated. I also want to really um, mention the video around the bartering has gotten a lot of attention and I've been receiving, oh man, the amount of positive information and contacts and messages. Thank you. It is phenomenal to see how many of us feel the same way. And as an effort, and what I'm going to try to do um, is with this community, and this is not stopping you. You can do this in your own. You can, because you have the power, you have the might. What I'm going to do is in the coming days, I'll be establishing with you, not alone, because we know the moment that we have to wait for someone else to do it for us, the moment that you have to wait for a leader or for some uh, uh, person that's in charge of a movement to give you approval, there goes your accountability. There goes a transparency. Because when you start asking questions, you get told, S-T-U-F. That's not going to happen. So we are going to build together, whether it's just for starters' sake here in the Western Cape or for South Africa or for Africa or for the rest. We're going to start Discord channels, WhatsApp community channels, because we know we're using all the stuff that's free. And when you know the product is free, you are the actual product. In order for us to establish a group in each town or province where you, the person who wants to barter, 
who doesn't want to make use of fiat currency, not because you don't have only or because it's difficult to access, but because you know that the way we've been doing things has not been working and that the true reason why people want money is so that they can exchange that money for goods and services. We're going to cut that road in half. In these Discord channels, based on the province or on the uh, town or whichever, we will decide. We, you and me are going to decide. You will then be able to say, hi, I'm a hairdresser in Marmersbury. I work for myself. I work from home. If you don't have the fiat currency to pay the 250 or 350, sorry, I don't know if but if you don't have the 250 or 350 for a wash and blow, depending on your length, of course, Etienne, you can come to me and you can exchange that wash and blow. My wash machine doesn't work. Can you please repair my washing machine? Not just fix it and say, oh, you need these parts, but give me the parts for the machine to work and your wash and blow is gedoen. Or if you are a person that is providing products, you sell products, you don't just provide a service and you say, look, I know not everybody can afford to buy bread. I bake bread, but I need to have the ingredients and I need the electricity. And if you feel that in order for you to pay for my ability to do that and you don't want to use money, I got you made chocolate tea. Or what I eigenlijk sal aanvaar is, ek het een nieuwe paar skoene nodig. That's what we're going to do. We are going to take back our power. We're going to take back the responsibility. And we are going to empower each other and move away from being dependent on a piece of paper whose value changes whenever somebody else in some other country that's sitting in a group of small elites trying to oppress us and keep us back from progress decide how much your rand is worth. How much your pula is worth, how much your euro is worth, how much your dollar is worth, how much your yen is worth, how much your shillings are worth. That time is over. They are going to shit themselves when they realize we aren't just awake. We aren't just aware and talking about it, but we're taking action. And we're taking back what is ours. Welcome to all of you that have joined. I'm going to quickly go to the comment section. There's no upper... 10 o'clock, yeah, it's now our 10 o'clock, perfect. Uh, then I'm going to call um, Elder uh, High Commissioner Charles Saunders. Let me quickly call him. Elder, I'm going to give you a call. I'm going to quickly read through the comments. I'm going to go and see who's here. And when I've joined you online, I will let you know as soon as I cross over from the live to you uh, to then have our interview. All right, let's quickly go to the comments and let's see who's here and who has joined already. And then begin on some unmiddelijk met die gesprek. Uh, Jacqueline, welcome. Shamiz Shem Samson, prachtig, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for the likes and the gifts and goodness. It's not what we're here for, but I appreciate, love you for doing what you feel is necessary. And I appreciate what you do in whatever capacity. It's wonderful. Thank you. Um, thank you for sharing. That's also wonderful because then more people will, it's not about getting more people to come and see. It's for more people to at least ask questions and to at least have an idea of what you've been speaking about from someone else's perspective. Hansi Willemse, welcome. User klomp nummers, hallo. Dani Pretorius, hallo Dani. Barry, lekker om jou te kry, Barry. Serena Hendricks, kai goas. Heart joint, Mitha, Glaskas, just like mainly, lekker, dankie mainly. Clive Barsain, remember keep your comments respectful. I will not be reading disgusting, rude comments that are just here for confrontation. If you have a question, ask your question. No question is dumb or not appropriate, but we will be having, uh, let me quickly call um, Elder High Commissioner here quickly. Yes, uh, we will be having your questions right at the end answered. Uh, let's see, Mr. Sauls. Thank you, Mr. Sauls. Welcome, Mr. Sauls. Who else is here? Um, we've got Fishto. Welcome, Fishto. Wendy is Wugiso. Wendy, welcome for Wendy. Uh, Denise is Wugiso. Uh, welcome, Denise. Emma, thank you, Emma, that you work by Samantha Adams is Wugiso. Katleho, Kaliboha, Katleho, Dumelang, Molweni Mula, Molweni Unjani. Aye, we must learn. 
How can we be living in Africa and we don't even know how to speak any of the other languages? And this is also what's important for us to understand when you go to the uh, uh, court system and you know the difference between legal and lawful and what legalese is. We need to understand when we're living in our country or overstand and understand when we're living in our country, we need to have the ability to express ourselves and to understand what someone else in our own um, country is speaking. Uh, so all of you, thank you so much for your likes and comments and for joining. Um, Tia, uh, can I barter my trade as I do ceiling and partition work? Now you see, there's Lord Tia, thank you for your comment. And we will be addressing the bartering again at the end of this conversation. But we are moving in a direction of action in order to take away the power of that paper and reinstilling it in us as the living man and woman. So for our today's conversation, I'm not going to keep you up any longer. Uh, hi, Commissioner. Sh um, uh, Charles Saunders is on the line. Uh, Commissioner, can you hear me? Guys, yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Ach, prachtig. Ah, Kai Hoa says, wonderful to have you here. Kayeza, I would just want to find out from our community, are you able to hear our elder? Um, and just let me know in the comments, give me a harki, or a thumbs up, or say it as ya, or yes, if you can hear him. Uh, Commissioner, <laughs> I'm so grateful. <laughs> I'm so grateful that you've taken the time to, to connect with us today, uh, and that you've also been open to share your story and your journey with us. En om een bykie van die prachtige boom se skade wee wat vandag sêke lekker reen uh, waterkies geskep het ook vir ons bykie kan deel hoe is dit moontlik for any living man or woman to truly reclaim their own sovereignty. Welcome and again kai gang gangs for your time. Maybe for everyone here could you kindly just uh, introduce yourself let us know who is uh, Charles Saunders, the living man, um, and then High Commissioner Charles Saunders as the role of a leader in the Aboriginal or Indigenous or Native or Khoisan or Tram or whatever label people want to call us, uh, um, where you are uh, in your authority, if you wouldn't mind, please. Thank you very much, uh, Dana Betian, for the opportunity. And today I am Saul Donovan was all the given names given to me by my mother and my father. And what it will be about status, titles, and position is not important. Those are for me are just mechanisms to put processes and systems in place in order for a community or a organization to work um, harmoniously. Mm. So today, I'm just Charles, the loving man on the soil of the land known as Southern Africa or Africa. Does so that will will that do for now? Of course, of course. Uh, uh, there is no better. Inter I think we just needed a few dancers and a pa fireworks to have that introduction. Also, lot of or den like a manier can celebrate vote because a living man or living woman every day we get a chance to draw breath and we have an opportunity to try be better is a day to celebrate. Now, I know the reason why we are here today is specifically to discuss emancipation and what that means. I think in order to give us a little bit of context, could you uh, start us off with how did you even, first of all, find out or begin this journey of emancipation? It happened um, about eight years ago. Probably before that, but eight years ago, I probably I came away of it. You know, my favorite, one of my favorite songs is "Everybody Sings to It" is Bob Marley, "Emancipate Yourself from Mental Slavery." Yeah. And what does that really mean? Up until today, you know, I'm, I have some clue of what it means because you have to live the experience. Mm. So what happened was I got retrenched officially for the fourth time. I was actually fired from my job. But then it became a voluntary retrenchment, settled at the CCMA. In any event, I should have learned at the first time being retrenched that I should have stopped looking for a job after the third time I was retrenched. Because you always end up paying money back in interest. If you without a, without a job, your debt runs up in interest. You know, and I got really, really frustrated with the fact that you work, you do well up to a certain point. People think you become successful according to their own definitions. And then suddenly you lose your job. Mm. 
the, you, you're three months away from La Virgen de Abril then, because now if you don't get another job, your debt or your responsibilities runs up. True. So after the fourth time, I just decided on the 30th of January 2017, the day I got fired, that I'm done with the system. I stopped paying all my debt, my bond. Credit card was about almost 45K, overdraft 25K, loan, doesn't matter what I owed the banks or the system, I said I'm done. Mm. For the simple reason, I went and researched, I want to find out where is the loophole, why are we struggling so much, why can we never get out of this system? Mm. And looking into the government, the government was you to help you. I went through legal aid to um, human rights. I have a paper trail, long, uh, eight year long paper trail. I took the bank on, on their own laws, on the Bills of Exchange Act, that you could pay your bills with a promissory note according mm. to their own laws. And what I found was what is written is not being practiced. So someone's lying. Mm. Either what is written is a lie, or the people preaching what is written is lying, or both of them are lying. But something is very wrong here, because why are we constantly suffering? Mm. When you go to a preacher or a government official and says, the law says I have rights, and then suddenly my rights disappeared, like, like I lost my job. Where did my rights go suddenly? Now I have privileges. Now I have to pay for that privileges. To, to gain your rights. But if you don't have money, how are you going to get even get the privilege? Exactly. So the privilege you have is legal aid and human rights, and, but they're not going to take on the government who's actually who's destroying you mm. with these laws. So I found that everybody that has sworn an oath, whether you're a judge in the constitutional court or the guy working in the municipal office who swore an oath to serve the people, they're all in dishonor of their oath of office. The police officer, the law enforcement officer, the lawyer, the preacher, the teacher. They're all in dishonor of their oath because they are now preaching one thing. The application is that of the colonialist invaders' laws. Mm. So where do I stand now? Now I have to sit and fight with family and friends over money. I've got a child I need to put to school. Or we need to feed it. So, and the money is not just enough or you don't have a job. Mm. So your debt runs up and interest is only created on paper. True. Compound interest. So I went to look for the loopholes and found that I can't live in the system anymore. And um, when I said I'm done, you know, and based on previous experience and one experience I can remember was the, actually in my last employee I took over someone's job a young girl and uh, it's a small company and uh, I eventually took up a job and then I had to give her a warning so she, she can leave so I can have a job sure. and she had a slight she had a slight disadvantage she was dyslexic I was a young white girl and I was checking her work and I got paid for checking her work and then I said but you can't pay me for checking someone else's work that's the ball so she resigned and I uh, interviewed a new assistant and uh, a week before uh, someone had to finish her job she died in a car accident oh my goodness so she never really had a chance in life with a slight disadvantage to succeed mm. Because it will always count against you. Very you know, good. there was all the time when I was looking for work, and then I got a phone call from uh, the Fushini group. I was not qualified in my experience. I don't have any paperwork, I don't have any college degrees, I only have a matric. Mm. Then the woman from the employment, I was in panel of people at the Fushini group. And the woman who phoned me on the Friday afternoon told me that. I was unsuccessful. It went to a more suitable candidate, although I was more qualified in my experience for the job. So I stopped looking for work. It is impossible mm. to get a job. And now you'll spend the rest of your life. I have to pay back money that doesn't exist. Sure. You know, when I was in the, in the 
was my last appearance in the uh, Western Cape High Court. I was my house and I went in there and I told the judge, when you call my name, I said, I walked up to him, I said, my name is Michelle and I feel insulted when you call me a person. I'm not a dip. Mm. And then he asked a question and then I asked him, he opened up the door and I asked him, I said, if there's only 100 rand left in the country and I make a loan of that 100 rand and he still asked me what interest, I said, yes. So I asked the judge, this is a high court judge in the Western Cape. I asked him, where must the money come? And mm, you know what the judge said? He said, Mr. Saunders, get a job. And he slept me down. That is what I did. And uh, that's, I kind of decided I'm not in the system anymore. Mm -hmm. And I did the research and I came across all the information on the gift of the truth, Michael Tallinger. I did a lot of research into common law. There was, um, was Johnny Liberty, all this, and David Strait, everybody teaching common law programs online. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm actually just receiving a visitor <laughs> while I'm talking to you. <laughs> and um, that's what that's how it all transpired. And then I just started saying, no, no. And people started thinking I'm crazy. I, I think and uh, up to today, I'm still crazy. <laughs> yeah, especially since the fact that you are now living under a tree, right? And, and that's, the, that's the most crazy thing is to be dependent on nature and on yourself to then... Uh, give you and to provide what you need. I just want to quickly highlight something from what you said. Thank you again for sharing that background because I think so many of us and so many people are convinced that because you are in this horrible situation, can't find employment, uh, have these debts or have these um, uh, things that, commitments that need to be, you've got rent to pay, you've got the moment that it's the rock bottom is the aha or light bulb moment where you truly then say, no, but this is now bullshit. I can't carry on like this anymore. I need to, this is not right. It's not fair. Something has to be done by it. Is it really um, only once we get to that point of absolute despair? You've mentioned the gift of truth and a whole lot of people that are sharing common law insights. And there are many other creators that are also on different platforms that share insights and teach people how to manage these things is it only when it is at despair that we are able to open our eyes and say this is enough and then to take in information like all these oaths that are being made are not in the benefit of the individual or of the living man or woman but for the purposes of uh, of enriching and continuing the corporation which controls everything is is it only despair that does that or have you found in your uh, journey to then outside of the rock bottom to then say, okay, I'm going to now go, I've gone to the high court. I've gone to, to these various institutions. I've tried to do what they're trying to do uh, by getting a job and paying for this and it's not working. H have you found others that have said it didn't need to take despair? I have, I've followed this process because this is what's right. Or is it only when it comes to rock bottom that people are, are really willing to then try and do something to free themselves? Commissioner? Oh. Well, uh, see, uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I've got you. You just broke for a second there. All right. Yeah, in my experience, um, this is the first time I hit rock bottom. It's been every time I lost my job, I was a danger. I hit rock bottom. I was out of work for a year and a half at the time. So, so imagine your bond not being paid and you say, um, they um, they don't want you. The kid the Sorry, commissioner. Oh, yes, you can. No problem. Uh, while, while we quickly sort out that, I want to quickly go to uh, thank you everybody for the comments and also for these little quickies that you're sending by Dunkey Duffwood. Um, there are some 
people that have experienced the same thing also been retrenched. Thank you for sharing your, short, your story, Liz. Uh, she says, it's crazy. I was retrenched in 2001. I applied for my UIF and to date, I still have received no money's paid. Liz, you know what I've also discovered is the moment that you owe these institutions money as a little club heart of your blyer. We're going to get to a lot of the questions. Please post your questions. Once we get to the end of our uh, interview, we will be addressing some of the questions we can. And I know we can't address everything in one conversation, but we will try and get to as many as we can. Please share your questions um, that you have either for, uh, for Charles or for myself, or if you just have a general question around the emancipation process, that would be appreciated. Um, uh, uh, Charles, are you still there? Prachtig, prachtig. All right, go ahead. You were saying? Sorry, what was I saying? So, so you, <laughs> you're talking about how, how you, uh, when you were going through uh, rock bottom, because it was only at that point where yeah. every time you had to lose your job that you were. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the toughest things was is not to be able to provide for your family. Sure. Preach. When you make a decision like that, mm. you know, and not being able to support my son. And putting that responsibility squarely on his mother, I think that was in, in his matric year that I decided I'm done with it. And um, that was a very tough decision and a guilt that I had to live for for a very long time until I had to forgive myself mm. for that decision that I made because it was in the, in the benefit of, I guess, for the future for the children because I feel that I'm here for some reason, and one of those reasons would be uh, it's for children, mm. is to save the children. And um, in that, there is a bit of suffering. Oh, yeah. You know, the one, if I remember one incident where my son called me and he said, Dad, Mom and I need to be out by the end of the month where they were staying, and they were staying with family. And I said, my boy, I don't have any money. I can't help you. However, it is times like this where these trials and tribulations make you a strong man. And because of our relationships, our relationship, we were not privileged. I mean, even to Weinberg boys, it's not it's a government school, but it's not a cheap school. Yeah. And um, at least I made sure I was present at all meetings that I could make and whatever I could give but I always made sure that I was present That's didn't matter where I was working or not working or didn't have any money mm. so I always say show up sure. you know it doesn't matter how if it doesn't have anything but just make sure you show up you don't have to do anything mm. so these are the things that um, if you think about a single mother that has to raise a child the entire family structure has been destroyed by the invaders. Mm. Um, there is no more family structure. Mm. You know, the, as with the dad is the head of the family, the mom, there is no, they've got equal responsibility, they are equal. And your children are your princes and your, and, and your, and your princesses. And um, that's your kingdom. True. You know, even if it's only just one prince or one princess. Mm -hmm. Because uh, you have a little son, you said he's three months old. Yeah, my beautiful son. I mean, I was there when my son was born. Yeah. Uh, I, I was, I was present, help giving, getting him out. And you see a woman in a position she will never see herself. True. You know, so that's a, that, that was a turning point in my life as well. Sure. Um, so it's a lot of small things that people don't necessarily speak of cause you are unable to explain the feeling. You can only love it true, true. or you can show it. There is no, the, unfortunately, the English language, uh, there is no language on the face of the earth that is able to explain a feeling. Mm. People like to describe, it's like, for instance, oh, I've got butterflies in my tummy. And everybody thinks, oh, it's a good feeling. And you know, your anxiety or somebody's in love or whatever it is, I've got the job, I'm excited, I've got butterflies in my tummy. 
However, in reality, what the hell is a butterfly is doing? Tell me that's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Think Back about it. Now. Look what you are saying. Mm. Listen to what to the words you are saying and your actions. Mm-hmm. It is too completely, um, you know, the one is divine and the other one is evil, so, so to speak. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Look what you are saying. You got butterflies in your tummy. Does anybody actually know what butterfly feels like in one's tummy? That's a very good question. And and that's also the reason why we have... Uh, sorry to cut you off there, but this is also the reason why we're having uh, these kinds of conversations is because we're not trying to predict. We're not trying to uh, dictate. We're not trying to push an agenda. It is merely for us as the individual man or woman to ask what seems to be a simple question that for some other reason is always behind some long, complicated answer. If you ask a judge, why is, uh, why is it that in every case, the result is always a payment? That it's not really the scales of justice and that, that not justice is being served, but there's always a payment involved. Is this a kangaroo or commercial court? You're not going to get a simple answer. So, so maybe what I would like to um, ask, because I also think that this is important for us to also, um, uh, we've got a pretty good background and, an, and, and a relatable understanding of what brought you to a point where you now said, okay, I need to take action. And the action that I'm going to take in order to alleviate this pain and this trauma, and more importantly, the control over my ability as a living man to make choices as a sovereign, can you help us understand what did the emancipation process look like for you? And if you could maybe help share, um, if somebody is maybe interested in doing it while you are explaining what it is, um, how anyone that's listening could then begin, not to take the journey, but begin to explore taking the journey of emancipating themselves. Well, for me, like I said, I started eight years ago. I knew about all the stuff. And when I did the, the deregistration last year and the emancipation this year, it was just a formality. So I had to basically physically, mentally, and spiritually put myself in situations, either deliberately or not by my own design, to have the experience. So it's not something that I, once again, can explain. It is standing. Try this. Try saying no to someone you always say yes to and see their reaction. <laughs> Woo, what did they say? <laughs> uh, throwing the toys out of the cart. Yes. I've seen that with my five-year-old. Yeah. Five-year-old. I'm not anymore. I'm for a change. Mm. You know, I have something to do. Mm. Um, the, the first thing is to say no to something that you should say no to. Right. Try that for a change. Try that first. Say no. I've got birth to do. Doesn't matter if it's your, your family or whatever. Stand, plant yourself like a tree. Mm. Let the wind, you know, uh, make your roots strong. It's a daily wrestle with the most high. In the most high, your, your higher self. True. You know for a fact, as soon as you start, you have an idea or you feel like doing something, now you're thinking about it. As soon as you start thinking, you the reason. Charles, oh, oh, sorry. I think we've got a we've got a little bit of a, a break there in the connection. You said as soon as you say no. As uh, soon. Oh, I think. Um, it, with the with the thought you were, you were saying that if you, yeah I've got I've got you now. You were saying that um, if you start thinking something, you start wrestling it with yourself in your mind. Ach nee man, ik hoop nou niet dus ik nie. Alright, okay, but maybe it's me. Let me. I don't know. My signal is a bit bad. Is that better? Yeah, that's that's a little bit better. Also, if you um, are on the chat, please let me know if you can still hear um, the conversation. You could just say yes or give me a thumbs up or, or a harki or something so that we at least know that you're still able to hear us. Um, you know, so, so I think it's also this weather is a little bit uh, tricky, so it might be messing with the signal. Okay, great. We've got confirmation. Yeah, we can true. be heard. Yeah, 
so it's um as soon i don't think about making a decision i make a decision there is no ifs or buts about my decision making i don't have I, I think, uh, just one second, um, Shah, we are really having a bit of trouble with your connection on that side. Um, do you think maybe we can... Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, so we've got a disconnection there again on the on your side. Okay, let me try. Are we good now? Yeah, just give me a second. Let me also make... I'm not causing any of the problem in Move Big Hit Ah, There we go. Let's try again. Yeah? Ah, that's it. Okay, we got you. We got you. All right. All right. Let me try and say that again. I said, when I used to think about something, I want to do this or I want to do that. Mm -hmm. But now, oh, I feel I want to do something. Now I start thinking about it. Now I find reasons not to do it. Because that one's going to say this or that one's going to do that. So I'm always concerned about what other people would say about what I would think or do. So I would have to be socially um, acceptable to what the rest of my community ex mm. expects me. So everybody places an places 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 an expected an expectation on someone else without their knowledge. It's not like they can hear your thoughts. Two hundred bucks today. I loan you hundred bucks because you in need, or, I, or you use my car, or whatever. Right, like today is fine. The next time you come, I say no. Now you cross with me because I said no. Mm. But it wasn't an agreement that I'm going to do it again. Mm. You see? So when you start doing things again and again, and in your gut feel, you know, I don't feel like doing this. I don't feel like getting up now. Or I don't, I'm lying in bed and somebody comes ask me to take them somewhere in my car. But now I don't feel like it. But now I have to get up and do it. But I'm spending time with myself. My time and my energy is the only two things I have mm -hmm. when I came to this earth. So I have the right to choose how to spend my time and my energy. Because it's mine. Not yours or anybody else's. Mm. The most I gave it to me. Not to anybody else. Mm. Why? Who gave you the right? You know, so we gave our rights away by implied consent when our father and our mother went to register our birth mm. by home affairs. In other words, awarded, sold us to the state. And you got a slave number on your birth certificate. Mm -hmm. So there it starts. You were sold as a slave as, at birth. Without, with your implied consent because you were a baby. You still trying to figure out how to use those arms and legs and the thingy between your legs and... And like, the eyes. In. <laughs> you, you, you're now in a, in, in a different spacesuit. Mm -hmm. You didn't have a vessel before. Now you're in a vessel. Now you have to learn to drive, like to learn to drive the car, the gears and everything. This is your vessel. You learn to operate your vessel. So you now born a genius because mm. you're figuring this thing out. Mm. Until I put you into this, into school. Mm. Now you learning things. Oh, sure. We got, we got another again. The signals uh, choppy again. Um, I don't know if, I think I, I, that is an important point that you're raising is that from birth, the deception begins and it's not willful. It's not like every parent that's given birth to or that has a child is consenting willfully. It's forced on us. It's distressed on us. Like I mentioned this morning where I was saying that at the moment after the mother's gone through, and if you haven't, you haven't got any children or if you've never been uh, the witness to having your children or uh, children been born, you won't understand or understand what that mother has to go through. It is, it's phenomenal what women can do. That's why I'm still convinced that all this talking about like God is a man, I'm like, eh, maybe, maybe we might have this wrong because women create this and look what they go through. And in that moment that they do that, the first thing that that nurse is doing is weighing your child, 
filling out that paperwork and then they say, you must go to home affairs. And that birth certificate that they then give you at home affairs is on bond paper. So it's all got to do with commercial um, uh, liability and bonds and liens. And it's not with the best interest of the individual or the soul that's now in that body. And then the schools condition you to obey. And then your parents teach you to obey. And your neighbors teach you to obey. And your family and your community. And everything has to do with, because if you don't do this, and if you don't do this, and if you don't do this, you won't have access to this and that. Where expressly our universal inalienable rights just like the Freedom Charter and the Bill of Rights, is not a privilege that somebody can take or give. It's something that you are inherently, the moment you take that first breath when you're born, <gasps> wah, there you go. You have now activated your inalienable rights. Welcome to Earth. Enjoy your journey. Nobody can take it away, but because of conditioning, we are then led to believe this is true, that is true, and anybody that stands in uh, opposition of either the system or the manner in which is socially acceptable. Like what you said, you know, our, uh, is it is it okay if I rather say no, but what is that one's going to think about me? That's what governs us instead of what is fair and what is lawful. So, so maybe if you can um, help us understand with this process of internal wrestling with yourself and discovering who you truly are, not by brand or label or association, but by internal introspective, uh, introspection. The steps that you followed in order to then not just tell the government no and the, the people that are our debt slave masters no. What were the steps that you took in order to emancipate yourself, to get to a place where that no isn't just carrying the power that is the only power which comes from within, but that also is then heard or recognized by this fake paper system so that there on paper, that emancipation is also um, carrying that power. What were some of the steps or what was the steps that you took after reconciling with yourself that this is what I'm going to do? Okay, what I did was I knew everything came about full circle in the, in the period of seven years. Well, kind of discovered uh, the gift of the truth and all those other um, common law and natural law platforms and education um, on, on social media. And then life happened and I carried on with other things and other went down many other rabbit holes. And um, if you had to ask me the same question yesterday, I would, I, I would have had a different answer. Uh, today, I think uh, if you ask me the same question tomorrow, I'll have a different answer. Mm -hmm. Today, I'll say, well, I ended up here in the emancipation process um, because of Jesus. Because everybody was in this funnel of the oath of office mm. in the name of Jesus. They mm. put me under this tree. Now, having um, gone through many rabbit holes and the struggle of learning about magnetism and energy and energy fields and quantum and um, you know everything that I could that would just me. I went down all those rabbit holes and the internal fight and the external fight. So it's almost like the, there is a saying that the greatest trick the devil if a pulse in humanity was making them believe there's a God mm. when you are the God. Sure. So I'm now that we know or we'll have to I'll have to be loyal to the actual text, um would be that I'm Jesus and Satan. Because I've got the if those who are old enough can remember Magnum P. I that used to be on T V. <laughs> yes. The little devil on the show put on the one side and the angel on the other side. Mm -hmm. And now and it's when you're looking, for instance, at that woman, are you looking at that woman as a piece of meat or someone you can have a, a romantic or a, a, a true conversation with? Mm. Not a conversation to corner, but a true conversation. Mm. So, so, <laughs> so I am both. Uh, my power comes from my dark side. Because mm. th th that is on like, last week. I had to attend this 
on the 24th, I had to be there. I don't have any money. I needed a pair of shoes, and a tie. So I had to go to the front door of the house that I'm locked out of with my own family. And then threaten my sister through the, through the kitchen window to say, I have a pair of shoes inside. And I have a, a pay of, uh, and I have a tie inside. And I need it by tomorrow night. And if it's not here, then I'm going to, somebody has to buy it for me or I'm coming into the house. Mm. So, I mean, that's another story. The, it's the, my fight with myself, my, the government and my fight with my own family. Uh, those who have taken the vaccine. I mean, I was really angry during COVID. Um, so this emancipation process is not only the, uh, a paperwork, it, it is a, it is a, a loving, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I can't, I don't have the word. It, it's the loving you. Mm. Do you want to be of everything? So everything was taken from me in the name of Jesus. I have nothing to attach myself to. Sure. That's so, difficult. I don't, have, I, live here, I don't have keys. Mm. I don't lock anything up. I don't have nothing to lock up. I, don't, I live under a tree. So I don't carry keys. What must I lock up? Mm. Mm. I, don't wake, I don't have a mirror. When I wake up in the morning, the first thing I, do, I, I don't look, go look in the mirror to see what I look like. Because I know who I am. True. So is gone from almost you would go from rags to riches or riches to rags now people with my support the reason why I have the data loss is not because I I did it on purpose it's now like this but because I've got locked out of my house a year and eight months ago the air machines in the house I used to cut my hair it was it was blessed cop and used to shave so I said well I'm not going to fight over a house or a brick of water or, or air machine I'll find them that way. So it, it, it's not important anymore. Mm-hmm. I think it's important for us to to clarify, and and also for anybody that's watching, um, when when you when you say that it was in the name of Jesus that you were blocked out, or that we're not referring to this in terms of a religious experience, uh, but correct, rather, correct, correct. but rather in the. Or judgment. Or, or judgment or in attack of someone's, and I don't like using the word faith, but but faith, but rather contextualizing the same thing that is utilized in order to oppress and control people. And a lot of people have a problem with that. And I know even you watching this, you might have a problem with this saying, how could you say that? But if we think back to, and we're not trying to isolate colonizers only, but if we think back to the rest of the globe and we talk about the papal bills and we talk about how did people function, how were tribes and communities and whether they were Aboriginal or Indigenous or they were brown or black or it doesn't matter, how was it that they were functioning and governing themselves and only with the introduction of a forced doctrine which leaves you with guilt, uh, leaves you with fear, and condemns you with violence, those same principles are applied within the legal system that with, it doesn't matter what religion you uh, uh, are with, but those same principles apply. Because when a lawyer submits a document or when they are putting in a, uh, a, a counter or a claim or something, they are putting in prayers. And if you aren't an attorney, Go to the, uh, uh, the, you can go to the law library, South African, there's free stuff there. You'll see, they will say, Ned Bank versus Sue and Sue, prayer, one prayer. Why are they using those words? Why is it that scripture is specifically used in, in process of things that are supposed to be unbiased and untainted and not favor of one person? So, so maybe in that regard, could you help us understand also what the, when you went to this, okay, now I've got enough face this industry or the system this when you when you applying for this uh, 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 emancipation because again we're coming to the point you made that this was given to you not by man but it was given to you the moment you were born 
I think it's very important for us, and I know we can have a, a, a deeper conversation around the rabbit holes because there's way more. That angel and devil analogy you made, I think that's also where the, 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 the trinity comes in because the angel and the devil is on your shoulders, but in your head, up here in the upper room, that's where God sits. And God is out, and they are outside of where God sits. Um, and, and I'm not talking about the government ordinance department or gold, oil, and diamonds. I'm talking about the supreme light being, the creator of all things that have no sex, gender, or that is the beginning of all things that lives in each and every one of us because it is us. Can you help us understand how would I go about once I have wrestled with myself, once I have gotten to terms with the manner in which we are manipulated with the same thing that is supposed to give us freedom and liberation, how do I start this process? Where do I go? Do I write a letter? Do I, you mentioned deregistration. Do I, do I uh, go to my police station? Do I have to appear in court? Must I go to the union buildings? Do I have to be part of a community? Do I have to, is there, I think that's what's critical for us to share with um, um, our viewers at the moment to begin that question of, now, what do I do? Should I do that? Can I do that? Um, and, and maybe what we can do in our follow-up conversation is we can have a rabbit hole conversation where we can explore some of what you've discovered and what has been shared around the world around the non-separation of state and church. Yeah. Okay. The emancipation process is a very, actually, simple process. Um, currently, the, the whole process is on the gift of the truth um, on the on their website mm -hmm. uh, and the emancipation. Uh, if people, I also have a, a platform called Common Law for Common People, where I share that information, and um, it's eight documents. You basically, have to fill in uh, the eight document children. Um, and seven, the other seven is basically commence you take control of take your vessel, your name, everything. Each document is specific to a certain issue. And um, those documents, you uh, sign with your thumb mm. and your hand. Um, I made a video of it. And um, those documents you copy, you have them authorized um, at the police station or, or commissioner of oaths. Mm -hmm. And those documents get mailed to the Treasury Department, Department of Finance, and so as now. There's three departments, initial ones that you see. And you send that same documents to yourself. So you have an original that is witnessed by two people. In my case, I chose two sovereign people who already emancipated, which makes it more powerful and binding mm -hmm. because it's all about the intent in that document. Mm -hmm. And uh, you sign it in front of witnesses, these witnesses, so you must always have a witness. And that's where scripture comes in again. It's like, we have two or more gather in my name, they, they are, I am present. So, it's true. Mm -hmm. So, that you mail to the various departments and you mail it to yourself. Mm. So I mailed mine and I received it to myself. I've got a sealed document, a sealed envelope, A4 envelope, with those documents in it. Now, if any court case, if anything should come up, and I'm not talking about criminal here, because we're, not, we're talking about um, natural rights and common law and cultural rights. Correct. You know, the, the law of creation itself cause no harm, cause no loss, cause no damage. Don't violate anybody's inalienable and inherent rights. Very simple. Doesn't matter what color your skin is. Very really easy to understand that. It's also very easy to understand or to comprehend that the Ten Commandments is very simple. Mm -hmm. The original ones, not the ones that's been um, amended mm -hmm. by the papal bull. So that document that I hold here with me, and if the government or if they appear in any court, I don't have to say anything. I'll give them that envelope, and if they open it up, they're contracting with me now. Power. That's my court. I decree the law. The sovereign decrees the law. Mm. And then, if, when the sovereign, so how do you decree the law? You establish it. How do you establish the law? You put it down on paper. That mm. means, establish means to put it on paper. Mm. So nobody can prove that I'm not a 
government supported nobody can prove that i'm not sovereign i've now documented it and mm -hmm. i used to work with a very old man called phil van Wyk, and his daughter used to go out with uh, soul coast man he was a very high flyer mm -hmm. and he got used in his old day in his old day and he saw and he told me he told me two things he said if it's not written it never happened and I stuck by that. Uh, I actually stuck it on my office doors sometimes. Don't come give me instructions down the aisle or down the or next week. I'm in the toilet. Can you do that for me? Good. Can you do this for me? No. If it's not written in this metaphysical universe mm -hmm. or this uh, dimension, it never happened. Sure. So in order for it to happen, it you have to establish it. Mm. And to establish it means to write it down, to put it down on paper. Mm -hmm. So, so if I may ask then, um, I'm sorry, sorry, you were saying? Okay, on this one. Okay, so what, what I'd like to know, I think this is also a question that a lot um, of people, are like, even I had this myself, where I'd, I'd ask, and maybe it's a two-part question, is one, I complete the emancipation process, I've, I've now let everybody know this, I am sovereign, I am reclaiming my inalienable rights, uh, this is not about, oh, now you're going to be rich and you have money and money, because money is in any case an illusion. Uh, but the two things that I'd like to find out is what does this ultimately mean for me as an individual, not committing crimes, living in honor, um, having integrity and not doing harm unto others going forward in terms of my life, my ability to uh, provide for my family, to create a future for myself or not create, but reclaim the future for myself. And then for our Aboriginal or Indigenous or Khoi or Tom people, what impact does this have on me as a as a calm person emancipating myself? Well, I can tell you what it means for me. Please, please. I don't know what it means for someone else. Good. Yeah, of course, of course. I mean, that, that's what we are mean, after. We're well, trying to learn no, from each other. So now, of course. So what well, happens? So, so shall, shall we got a bit of a disconnection there again? Can you hear me? Hello? No. Oh, all right. While we quickly wait for the signal to return. Oh, there we go. Now I can hear you again. I can hear you again. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. So, so emancipation, what does it mean for you, the living man, and then also as a, as a descendant of the Aboriginal people? Original or first indigenous people. And, mm. Oh no. It's very choppy. Char, no, no, of course. Oh, no, no, let's try again. Let's try again. <laughs> let's try again. Okay. I did load the, the Anaman Wi Fi, so maybe I'm a special Wi Fi often just try data. We, I think maybe, yeah, maybe it's jumping between the two and that's why it's cutting uh, the signal. Let me try it quickly. And and just in case you are thinking, ooh, because I can hear that, and I can feel your spirit already saying, can you sing? So much you know, kaka pratet van Jesus. That's what come that We understand. <laughs> Listen, it's not. We are not bashing. We're not. Cra we're not this is not a, an attack on your religion. Uh, if you feel some type of way about it, maybe you should have that conversation with yourself, and then come back and rewatch what we are, are watching. And there was a comment that was saying, I hope that this is being replayed. Yes, this will be replayed, um, and I'll make an edited version available so that you can watch and re-see what we've been uh, discussing. Um, but, but maybe yeah, maybe this could be our, our closing thought before we take some more questions. What does the emancipation mean for you and for you as an Aboriginal descendant of the Indigenous Native peoples? For me, it means freedom. Right? I have to learn how to administrate my legal name. It's not going to go away. Mm. You're sitting with a system that is holding out holding out. It's not going to hand over power easily. It's not going to hand over power. Mm -mm. You have to take the power. You have mm. to take your power back. That, they believe they have the power, but you are more powerful. So they're already shivering because there's already, already I believe more than 2 million people in South Africa that's emancipated. So for me as a descendant of an indigenous family, I look at 
it this way. Wherever there is a footprint or a painting on a rock of where my ancestors walked in the Southern Hemisphere, in Southern Africa, that is the territory, not the land. Mm. That is the territory we walked with the animals. So where there is a mark of my ancestry, I am part of this land. I was created from this land. So whoever comes here and tries to mess it up is stepping on me. Mm. I'm part of the soil. I am the soil. My spirit is the soil. I'm connected to everything. The tree that I live under. I had a situation. I was lighting a joint on the beach. Sorry. A couple of months ago, earlier this year, my son and I, when we get together, we go to the beach. And I roll myself a spliff mm. on, uh, the, in Milneton, there by the lighthouse. And as I light it and I will pass, I will pass law enforcement. And this law enforcement comes to me on the beach and tells me I can't smoke here. So I said to him, I have a right to contract or not to contract. I'm not interested in this nonsense. So I walk into the water and I go stand and smoke. And he talks to, he talks to my son. Mm. So he says, he says oh, you can only smoke at home. So my son asked him, well, he doesn't have a home. Where must he smoke? Well, I'm under a tree. The roots of this tree is connected to the entire southern, to the entire continent. So where do I belong? Mm-hmm. Anywhere on the continent, if I'm a child of the soil, is it not? True. It's my territory where my ancestors walked. True. Yes, like I wish so, I could have seen that law enforcement's face. <laughs> <laughs> when I came back, I, I mean, he, he just disappeared. He couldn't, he couldn't answer the question because my sister wrote, that is the truth. Mm. I am houseless. Mm. I live on the tree. I live in creation. So where is my home? Mm. Everywhere. Sure. That needs to be acknowledged. That the indigenous peoples Territory, I'm not talking about land. Mm-mm. The territory they covered. What was here before? Sure. They built churches and pharmacies and post offices and hospitals and gambling places and brothels. Mm-hmm. And uh, who, who ruled here yeah. before that was built here? Who brought it here? We have to bring it back to before. And we have to do it systematically. True. Peel away the, uh, the layers of the onion until you get to the core. Mm. Peel away all the deception. But, but, but it's not an overnight. Uh, it's a journey. 100%. 100%. Shah, I'm so grateful for your, for your time and for... I know that, like I said, this is not a, a one-time conversation. We definitely are going to... Uh, explore more of this. I'm so grateful for you sharing your 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 story and giving us some insight into the process that you followed. I want to quickly go to some of the questions that we've got, um, just so we can uh, help where we can. There was a question uh, from Liz who who said that she was retrenched in 2001 and she's applied for the UIF and still to date she hasn't received payment. Um, the I think the the question around here would probably be. Once emancipated, how do we get seen by these institutions like SARS and the municipality and uh, the law enforcement for, 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 for sake of how, how are, we, are we now at the mercy of them to again distress us and force their law on us? Or as an emancipated person, do, uh, yeah, what is our, how do they see us? They are ignorant and they need to be educated. So you have a choice. You can be asked me. I was angry and I did it the angry way. It doesn't always work that way. Mm. I mean, we were at the high court. I was there at marches. And we also did... Die hoge rechts of sy turnstel is terug getrap en ons moet in die hof wees en die sê nie vir my nie en ek is a die en ek is a die en ek is a... Do you have help a lot? No. It, it, uh, it brought very little progress in the indigenous movement's um, uh, action. However, it did have a purpose. Mm. So it is paperwork that if it's not written, it never happens. So if you go to the gift of the truth, 
you will learn how to administrate your legal name. So there is bills of exchange. So there are people that who's got zero tax, who's got businesses. SARS don't know what to. These people don't know what to do with a sovereign. Yeah. First place, there is a public servants questionnaire that you give to every public servant, and you charge him seven hundred. The price is written on the seven hundred thousand rand a second. So you you make the price. Your signature is now the currency. Mm. Because you're acting in private, and once they um, vacate their oath of office, because they are police officers, mm. you now take them on in their private, not in the position as a police officer. Okay. You take them on as a, because you're acting in the private now, so you're taking them on in the private. So he's going to work for you for the rest of your life. So we need to educate these people before they actually get really. Um, so there is documents you can serve to your local police station telling them that you are sovereign and this is not, uh, but there's notices, a trespass notice you get, you put on your property to say this is sovereign ground, mm -hmm. this is educate your neighbors, educate your family who is in law and law enforcement or police, because when I was assaulted by a police officer, here in Atlantis, when I went to, to try and make a case against the police officer, I was assaulted in the police office. Yes. When I made a video in the police office, in the police station. So he arrested me on the Poppy Act. He said, I'm not giving a damn about your Poppy Act. Then he arrested me, threw me in the cells, assaulted me, took my phone. Was going to hold me there for the weekend. Eventually, if uh, I... I managed to get hold of someone who's a friend of mine, who is a friend on, on my platform, who became a friend, a very good friend. And they were talking on the phone. So this officer, Simon, Sergeant Simon, then filled up his own report. I could not make a case against the officer for assault. But it does not mean because I'm quiet, it is going away. Of course. Once we've set up our community courts, every injustice has to be corrected. 100%. And I think it's so also we need to learn how to set up our community's courts. Definitely. And it's also important to mention that this is not to say all police officers, all law enforcement, all others are, let's say, aiding and abetting willfully. Some of these men and women are purely only trying to earn a living for themselves and operating within the system. And sometimes, like you say, the ignorance is the fact that they just don't know any better. And educating somebody is a better option. Uh, uh, quick, uh, quickly here, I've also got another question from uh, Sovereign Wolf. They've refused to accept my documents and it got returned unopened. Do you have any advice for Sovereign Wolf in this instance? I'm assuming that that's for uh, the emancipation process and the documents were refused to be accepted and they were returned to him unopened. Oh, well, that's a good question. I haven't heard of that. I'll say, oh, send it. Now you send it back. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you, join, you send it back or... The... Um, did you send, did, I don't know if they send it by registered post. Well, I think what we'll do is Sovereign Wolf, uh, I see you're still here. You've got another question for me as well. But uh, if you can uh, drop me a message or uh, send me an email, then we can connect you. Uh, you if you aren't on, uh, and if you don't mind also, Charles, what I'll do is I'll make available the link to your WhatsApp group so that anyone that's looking to be educated or to further the conversation with you and to gain some of that knowledge, they can join. If I have your permission, then I will share that in my link um, uh, on my website so that others can also then join your uh, your community. So maybe Sovereign Wolf, if you could do that, that would help. But the next question he's got here is, how does sovereignty apply to a European descendant in Africa? That's a very good question. How does sovereignty? Yeah, sovereignty ap apply yeah. to a European descendant in Africa. In Africa. Mm. Well, your sovereignty, if you're sovereign, right, then you can travel to any country where there is sovereigns. Because in every country, because the sovereign movement and the emancipation movement is worldwide. Correct. A lot of other countries have started their own assemblies and courts. So a sovereign in one country can travel to another, 
another district or another country and go visit another sovereign. Okay. So in my case, my I am sovereign. My sovereignty lies and my protection lies in the kingdom of the United Sovereign Cape Kingdom and its court. Mm. So I surrender certain rights and privileges to my kingdom mm. for my protection because mm. I cannot do it on my own. Correct. So sovereignty and is in every country you have sovereign people. Okay. We, the government, don't touch and you don't hear about it because the government don't want people to hear about that. There's the Republic of Good Hope within the Cape. You go on Facebook, Google it, type it in. There is a sovereign state within the Western Cape already. Because mm. these are a small group of people, there are small groups of people that understand or have understanding of what needs to be done. They have recordings where they speak to traffic officers who pull them off and say, they educate the traffic officer and saying, listen here, I'm actually done this and that and that. Because when it comes to a court, no court will be able to find you or judge you or put you in jail. Mm. But the traffic officer or the police officer will still do so. Mm -hmm. So choose your battles carefully based on your, um, your confidence in the knowledge that you are an experience that you've already gained. Of course. And, and, and I, I, think, I think there's another... It's a general assembly um, Zoom meeting tonight. I'll put that, I'll, I'll double check. Oh, uh, uh, normally on Thursday, they have a general public because then you have people all over the world joining, mm -hmm. um, all, all from other countries. Oh, um, so I'll see if I can put that link on. So I would also suggest people to join the SA general assembly Zoom meetings. Um, I'll Put all that information on on the WhatsApp group if they join, or you can put it on your platform. It's, oh, and it's free. All this information, it's free of charge. Yeah, cost nothing. What people have to do is do it itself. Nobody's coming to save you. Mm -hmm. Remember that. Nobody's mm -hmm. coming to save you. You have to save yourself in this process. 100%. Uh, I've got one more question here before, and, and if you still have questions, please post them. Uh, I've got one more question here that's uh, been asked by Leonard8, DD Leonard8. And I think this one is specific to your uh, ability or your uh, position as a high commissioner. Does the laws of the South African Corporation also apply to us, the Aboriginals? Only if you still registered with the IEC to vote because that gives you them permission to do what you want they want. Wonderful. So as long as you still registered in the system, you must remember the United Sovereign Cape Kingdom is a sovereign kingdom on its own. The government has no say over what happens in that kingdom. Have they been recognized by the South African uh, uh, fraudulent government? Uh, so, uh, in other words, does, uh, let's say, for example, a ambassador from the sovereign uh, United C uh, Cape of Good Hope um, have uh, uh, like direct connection and co and communication with the fictitious South African government, or or, or are they not recognised like Oranya is a, uh, is recognised? The government does not have to recognise us. No, oh, there you go. We recognise ourselves. We are sovereigns. We decree the law, and we've established it. We don't need recognition or acknowledgement mm. from a government. We've acknowledged ourselves. Sure. So nothing the government has to say what to do with him doing has got no local standing on a sovereign nation. And as it stands, the United States Communion has done and followed all the correct processes and procedures to establish it. Sure. Power. So there was so when I started this journey, I looked for in the Aboriginal Indigenous Movement movement, I was looking for someone when I started challenging these leaders on common law and natural law, why are you not practicing your own common law, your own indigenousness? Mm. And there was only one, and that was Senior Paramount Chief King Cornelia Buta the Fifth. And I follow his example. Because there is for me is no other one who sets the example. And I follow him because he sets the example for me to follow. Mm guides me. Sure. I, so it falls in line with my own 
frequency, my vibration, or my learning, teaching, and experience, and research. Sure. I think you've given us so much to digest and for us to chew on and marinate on. Uh, here's a bunch of other questions that are coming, and I'm going to read them uh, so that we are aware of them. But I think what I will do is in my uh, link, I will add your group. So anyone that is looking to join your uh, WhatsApp uh, group in order to get more education and insight can. I will also, once you've shared the uh, live Zoom, because I have participated in a few of those Zoom calls before uh, with the SA Jural Assembly. Uh, if, if you could share that information, I will make sure that I make it available here uh, so that if anybody would like to not hear anyone like, oh, I don't like this, this Rasta looking brain Bushman man telling me and some other one telling me, then you can at least hear it from somebody else's mouth and you can potentially from a different perspective, hear the same truth in a way that could resonate with you. I will share that link as well. Uh, the last few questions that are here and what then I'll let you go and, 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 I, and maybe I'll ask you not to answer these questions, but to maybe leave us with a parting thought. Um, the, uh, a question that came here is, how do I deregister from the voters role? I haven't voted in the election, but I'm still on the uh, on the votes. I remember you said something earlier about actually completing that deregistration form. Uh, somebody asked you, where do I cancel the birth certificate? Um, and I think that's something we will need to dive into specifically. Uh, Maya Les Walker, thank you for your question. Um, and I see there's another person that also wants to know that. So we will definitely dive into that. And then a last one here from um, the Sovereign Wolf again. He's asking, do you have to provide proof of self-governance? Uh, so we, we, we appreciate, love your question. And we will be addressing uh, And I think I will try to address them in separate videos So that we can also have more people That have insight and Personal experience also share on that Before I let you go Charles, could you leave us with a parting thought Something that would uh, That you might feel any If you yourself were participating In this conversation and you were hearing this For the first time and you heard Your story now but you were hearing it As, a, as somebody for the first time What would be your message to that you that's just discovering this and that has so many questions and so many desires but knows that something isn't right what, what would be your message to them um one cannot deny another that which one demands for oneself and enlightenment means to choose love over being right thank you yeah Hi, Gang Gangs. Uh, I truly appreciate love you. I will have a connection with you again and we will definitely arrange a second session where we will discuss some of the rabbit holes. But I truly am grateful for your time and your contribution today. May you have a wonderful rest of the day. I'm hoping that the next time that we do this, I'll be sitting there with you under the tree and I'll, I will roll a joint for us that will be able to share up to our ancestors to give thanks and praise for the guidance that brought us to here. I'm very grateful for you, Charles. Thank you very much for your time today. I look forward to that piece, Papa Brother, and to all your viewers. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. You all have a wonderful day, and I look forward to whatever is coming my way. <laughs> it's oh, quite exciting, though. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful uh, day. Kai uh, Woo! Okay, so I know that was a lot, uh, and there was probably t too much for us. That, uh, that Charles or High Commissioner Charles Saunders is on for you to then go and interact and have further conversation with him. The most critical thing for you to take away from today's session is you yourself make the choices that shape the future that you are heading into, but more importantly, the present. And just because you know the truth, just because you've discovered what it would mean and what it would take to be sovereign doesn't mean that that is going to be given to you lightly. It is like a child that is now 21 and trying to tell their child, that parent finds it very difficult to let go of that control, to let go and let that child be an individual person for themselves. You will find struggle. This is not a, a silver bullet. It's not a magic wand that makes everything go away. And it's based off of a very important principle of honor. Acting in honor. Being in honor, not dishonor. Acting in love first and foremost. And not doing harm unto anyone else, including yourself. 
I'm grateful for your time you spent today. If you've missed it, I will put a, um, a replay of this on my YouTube. If you are not sure of how or where or what, you can always email me. If you go to my profile, you'll see there's an email. I don't DM people first. I don't sell you anything directly. I won't be like, oh, well, in order for you to get this information, you first have to pay me. If you feel that you would like to contribute because it is only because of people and places like in Marmersbury, Ella Bella Beauty Salon in Fortrecker Street that supports me, my family, and my ability to provide contact, uh, content like this. Crazy Customs in Marmersbury that provides you with uh, car accessories and the rest that, that support me and my family so I'm able to provide this content. MP Trading, the tile manufacturer that also provides support for me and my family directly in order for me to have moments and share this information and have interviewed guests on. Because of those places, I'm able to do this and your support through your likes and your shares. And if you can donate in fiat currency, great. If you can't donate in fiat currency, like it in, save me vaje, khan dia mamas bari, isos a bichi botar, isos a bichi ayers for my plus. All of those things are not required but are appreciate loved. Thank you. Thank everyone for sharing. Thank you for everybody that was commenting and providing some information. This is not the end. We're going to continue this conversation. We're going to have more of these interviews. If you'd like to connect with me again in my email uh, profile, there's an email address. Send me an email. No question is not uh, good and uh, is, is, is stupid or um, not going to be answered. I will answer every email, but I wish you and your family love, peace, mercy, prosperity, and to everyone that loves you back. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Kai gang gangs, kai se are. Uh, let me quickly see you. Oh, so, uh, I'm not clued up on TikTok. How do I follow you? Okay, I've, uh, thank you for the platform, Etienne, and thanks to Shah for sharing his valuable information. Prachtach. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Elder Shafik, I must have you on too, Ian Fanida. Uh, oh, and, and then I will share those links for the common law uh, group. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Go be kind because it's so much better than being a...